Well, good day, folks. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about climate change. We're not going to debate whether it's uh, human caused or otherwise caused. <laughs> Real or otherwise. <laughs> just simply the reality that the climate is changing and overall uh, things are getting uh, warmer. Uh, so we'll try and, and go through the woodlot uh, with you and, and point out uh, what impacts that I can see are likely to happen as a result of climate change and how we may need to adapt and work with our woodlot in order to uh, have it survive in the best possible manner. Uh, the one thing, of course, that I want to emphasize is that climate change is ultimately unpredictable. Currently, the world is trying to recommend that we hold temperature globally to about 2 degrees Celsius. Increase. Increase. Uh, whether we accomplish that or not is totally unknown. Uh, frankly, the way our politicians, uh, certainly in Canada, are, are moving, uh, it's not inspiring. Climate change has the ultimate ability to virtually totally destroy humankind and civilization in a radically. Uh, major cities are almost all built near oceans and rivers. If the ice of the uh, Arctic and Antarctic are, were to totally melt, huge swaths of population would be totally displaced. We don't know whether we can practice traditional agriculture in periods that are flopped between long-term serious droughts and huge unimaginable amounts of precipitation that we've never experienced before. I was just watching a, a video, he's an arborist uh, located out in California. He concluded his video by, by saying that that evening they were expecting 10 inches, inches of rain, something that they had never had in that area ever, ever before. <laughs> so we need to take it seriously and, and uh, to be responsible in our woodlot management, here, here are some things that we'll try and accomplish. So one of the key things uh, that's predicted for this part of the world, and I believe it's mostly the, the Maritimes here in Canada, uh, is that we'll see on average more precipitation. Uh, doesn't mean there won't be periods of drought, but basically we'll have more heavy rain events. So your infrastructure, uh, bridges, and we'll have a look at culverts, uh, are going to have to handle uh, more water flow. Uh, and you need to evaluate uh, if there's really bad consequences when these uh, pieces of infrastructure don't hold up. Like, are you going to wash out large areas of uh, silt into your stream? Uh, this area here is already, this bridge has already been uh, overflowed twice in the last few years. Uh, and it was built beyond the specifications required. So, uh, build much bigger than what you think you need uh, and evaluate uh, what might happen to your woodlot if, if, if your infrastructure doesn't hold up. Standing down here where one of our culverts uh, is, it grows across the road to drain to the lower side of the road. A uh, number of years ago, it did overflow 
Uh, I think it was a spring melt heavy rain event, uh, but it was mostly caused by debris blocking the, the culvert, uh, reducing its capacity. But in here, you can notice this rock. I've created a low area that's protected with rock. When this culvert overflows, instead of going out and across the road and washing out the road, it will go straight down into this ditch along the road. And down in here, I've left logging debris, branches, and put any number of bucket loads of rock in there to help shield and protect that when and if that water does flow down hard into this ditch. So I'm protecting it as much as possible from further erosion. Because uh, I know we now have uh, viewers from a broad area, certainly several from the U.S., I think one from the U.K. I saw one the other day from Malaysia. Cool. Uh, we're going international. Everyone is going to have to do their own research in terms of where you're at and what tree species will adapt uh, to climate change. Here in, in the Acadian forest of, of New Brunswick, uh, the, the fir tree, this conifer behind me, uh, is because it's probably our dominant conifer. It's also one that is not going to be well suited for climate change. It's near its most southerly border right now. Uh, so it is gradually going to die at a younger age. Uh, and, you know, it may eventually be eradicated, but it could also persist just through it's such an aggressive uh, seeding tree. It's very aggressive at getting started. Uh, I can foresee that we'll have uh, continuing boats of fur that that simply are dying younger and younger, but they're going to pers perhaps persist uh, and hang around for quite some time. Good, then I'll still have them for my Christmas trees. Well, that's one good thing about them. Uh, so you need to look at what's called the silvix in terms of what kind of conditions and temperatures are your tree suited uh, and look at which trees uh, may be further south that will uh, be better adapted to a warmer climate. But trees will never grow or move as fast as climate change. So uh, in New Brunswick, we're looking at approximately a five degree warming for New Brunswick. The world is two, but the poles and the closer you are to the poles, we will experience greater warming than at the equator. So we're looking at a five degree temperature change. That is approximately the same as moving 500 miles further south. So our climate in New Brunswick will be somewhat similar to around, I believe it comes out around New York City. So if you look and see what trees are flourishing in that area, those are probably the, the species that will be best suited for that future five degree warming. Uh, but by nature, like trees in New York, it will take them thousands of years to naturally expand into our area, right? They're moving at a couple of hundred feet each year. Your typical tree, uh, I think the, the widest spreading seed tree in, in our area is the white pine. It spreads its seeds roughly 500 feet. Of course, you always get some movement with birds and squirrels and so on. But uh, so that means it moves a mile every 10 years. Okay, 
So to move 500 miles... <laughs> it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. So we need to uh, work with the species that we mostly have. We could certainly do some planting uh, from, from southern areas, but those southern trees are not just going to start showing up on our doorstep anytime in, in our lifetime. I'm uh, standing here with a white ash tree. One of the uh, downfalls of warming winter temperatures is that pests and pathogens that have often been controlled by the severe cold of our winters uh, are now going to be able to, to spread further north and increase in numbers because the, the cold is not keeping them under control. So right now the emerald ash borer is within roughly a hundred kilometers of this area and uh, it's not going to go away. Climate change, uh, the warming will certainly help it spread further and probably faster than it would under any normal or previous, previous normal. historical climate. Uh, the uh, pine beetle out in British Columbia that destroyed, I think it's millions, certainly hundreds of thousands of acres, uh, basically that's attributable to the fact that it proliferated with the warming of, of winters. Uh, so we're going to see more of that uh, and they'll be able to, you know, uh, migrate from further south, ones that don't exist now. Uh, they exist, not well, here. Well, they exist, but not, not here. So we're going to, we're going to, your, your woodlot is likely to see more uh, stress and damage from, from pests and pathogens uh, because of the warming temperatures. So with climate change, we, we know that there's warming of the oceans and hurricanes and other wind events are going to increase in strength. If, if that happens, then of course wind throw in your woodlot becomes more problematic, especially if you get heavy rains that really wetten uh, the soil and then uh, wind, heavy winds on top, you get a lot of destruction, just as I think Debbie has captured here. Now this is mostly uh, a low-lying wet area that stays wet on a regular basis, so it's not a per se climate change cause right at this point. But one of the things we are doing uh, is in these areas uh, take out the fir and the conifers with their shallow roots and encourage, uh, in our case, white ash and other deciduous trees that are more deeply uh, rooted. 99.9% uh, .9 of all the trees that have blown over in the uh, 11 years or so that we've been here in the property have been conifers. Uh, we have had virtually no uh, wind throw with uh, our deciduous trees. Uh, out in an open area, we've had a few small red maple that got snapped off, but really the, the damage here in our woodlot uh, has been almost entirely with, with conifers. And so, uh, for two reasons, because of climate change and, and reducing wind throw, we're moving to more deciduous species but I also believe that the Acadian forest originally was more deciduous than its current state, uh, dominated by maple, beech, and other, and other hardwoods. 
uh, although it was still predominantly a mix forest, uh, it's become much more driven towards conifers uh, by the way that we've been managing our woodlots. Uh, it's been a practice in this area, and I suspect on a quite widespread area, basis, uh, to do uh, harvesting in the wintertime for places that are sensitive and wet, uh, so that you basically let let the ground freeze, and then you put the heavy equipment on it, so that basically you're creating no damage and rutting to your property. With climate change, it may become more problematic in terms of trying to time those kinds of winter harvests because obviously we're going to get uh, later in the year before we get deep frost. Uh, it's going to be gone earlier in the spring. So the whole winter management may be of sensitive areas may just become a little harder to manage. Well, and certainly uh more thaws during the winter too? Yes. Yeah, whether, but again, uh, and, and maybe we can just finish on this note. Uh, with climate change, we need to expect the unexpected. Uh, right now, even though the globe is warming, I was just reading countries, China, France, Japan, the, their electric plants are having great difficulty keeping up the demand for heat because the, of the extreme cold that they're experiencing. So climate change doesn't mean that we are simply going to get warmer and warmer and warmer. Uh, we can get warmer and warmer and then perhaps have a historically cold winter that we've never seen before or maybe a historically cold July. We just really don't know uh, exactly what's going to happen. The trend is definite. The trend is the planet is warming. But at the same time, within that, we could have all of the unexpected. Uh, cold periods that we've never had before, uh, rains that we've never had before, winds of course, uh, it's just a matter of, you know, uh, predictability is, is going to be difficult. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a little preachy perhaps in places, but uh, did the best we could. Thanks again. Catch you next time.